what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Hey there, everyone. Welcome. John Corcoran here. I am the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast. This is a live episode, which will be going out on both Smart Business Revolution and on Inspired Insider as well. And I'm here with Dr. Jeremy Weiss. Dr. Weiss, how are you? All right. Thanks for having me. All right. So we're going to be talking about how to launch a podcast. This is a very specific topic, but how to launch a podcast, the things that you should actually do in order to have a successful launch of your podcast. Of course, We've both been doing podcasts for 12, 13 years uh, between the two of us, uh, 24 years between the two of us total. Um, And so we know that the benefit comes from the long term. And a lot of times people put a lot of emphasis on just the actual launch of it. Uh, But we do want to spend some time to talk about that and how to do it successfully. Some things you should do leading up to it, things you should do when you actually launch and things you should do afterwards. And of course, go check out some of my past episodes, some of Jeremy's past episodes and his podcast. We've got all kinds of great uh, content there with CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs. Um, so go check those out. And I also am the co-founder with Jeremy of Rise25, where we help connect B2B business owners to their ideal prospects. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25, where we teach B2B businesses how to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. And you can go to rise25media.com to learn all about how we do that. All right. So, Jeremy, let's start with a foundational question. So for those who are about to launch a podcast, one of the first things they want to be doing is thinking about, uh, and, you know, people love to talk about what microphone they're using, what software they're using, stuff like that. But we, we're a little bit of, uh, um, we kind of zig whenever else is zagging. We're kind of a go against the grain. But what we encourage our clients to focus on is, did you create what we call your dream 100? Elaborate on that thought. Yeah, I mean, I think um, a very common question we get is, um, how do I get downloads and subscribers, right? Yep. And we kind of just turn that question around to what is the main goal? Like, for instance, I was talking to a company, they're, you know, serve e-commerce companies. I said, let's say you got a million downloads on your podcast. They're like, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter because if they're only really serving certain types of e-commerce companies, does it really matter that they get mass market appeal? So we're right. talking about something that is has there's a actual business behind it. So the first thing we tell people to do is actually thinking about and creating a Dream 100. And Dream 100 doesn't mean some people think of Dream 100 as clients. When we think of it in a broader scope, which is clients, um, referral partners, strategic partners, people in the universe of your clients as well. So organizations, this is mission associations, critical. conferences, right? All, all the, the centers of influence around your industry. Yeah. So when we think of that, that's in the broader scope of thinking of, and this includes people who are champions of you who may not even be in that industry, but they just are champions of you and your company and what you do. And, you know, everyone has connections in their universe and connections can vary. So you just never know. Yeah. And, you know, if you go back even further before you even thought about, you know, creating a podcast, um, these are the people that should be on your radar screen because they're people in your industry. In many cases, you know, when we work with clients, they already know who these people are. Um, but there, you know, there's all this extra work you can do to think about additional conferences, additional associations, different organizations, the different strategic partners, additional referral partners. Um, but but those are the people that you want to ultimately build a relationship with through the podcast in your career through your business, whether it's for the launch of the podcast or whether it's for, for years to come, years ahead. So so first is actually thinking through that foundational piece, which, which will help with the launch of the podcast and will also help with your larger business objectives. Yeah, so I mean, the key, one. you know, is the strategy because, you know, John, we know like anyone could talk into a mic and put it on YouTube or somewhere, but the key is to have that foundation strategy in place and it starts with with that. Right. And we know so many people that have 
you know, maybe have built, uh, you know, a big audience, but it's the wrong audience. Like they'll say, like the people that listen to my podcast are not appropriate for my business. And, you know, sometimes they end up giving up on the initiative because they haven't thought through that foundational piece, you know, or they've created 50, 100 videos on YouTube, but they haven't actually thought through how we're going to make this um, benefit the, the business that I have. Yep. So that's number one. The next and piece I want to just, what you just said there, I want to recommend, we did another episode on the five different types of episodes everyone should be creating. So check that episode out because that goes into more detail on the nitty gritty of that, right? Yep. Which you just mentioned. Yep. So after you've identified your Dream 100, then the next step is doing outreach. Um, so leading up to a launch of a podcast, you want to be emailing people. But even before you're emailing them to tell them, hey, I'm launching this, please share it. I'd love it if you shared it. You can involve people in the entire creation process. So we encourage people, you know, email your network and invite people to uh, tell them, you know, first of all, tell them that you're, you're launching this initiative and ask them, hey, um, what do you think of this title idea? Uh, what do you think of, of this type of guest? Who would you recommend that I feature? I'm looking for this type of guest. Who would you recommend that I feature? Vote on your cover art. Create two pieces of cover art. Say, here, this one and this one. What do you think of between these, the, these two? People love to get involved, and it, it gives them a sense of ownership, and it gets them more uh, invested in the success of the initiative and more likely to recommend other guests and more likely to share it and more likely to help you be successful. I mean, people do this, John, with their books all the time. You'll say, hey, do you like this cover or this cover? Do you like this title or this title? And you can see these creatives and that involves you in the book. And then you're wa you know, watching when they're launching the book and supporting the book. So you feel like you had a hand in helping create it. So you've identified your Dream 100. You've started to outreach. You've involved people in the process. Next step is actually creating the content for the podcast. So doing actual interviews of people. And this is, this is where it gets to the five different types of content, which is uh, we've already done a separate episode yeah. on. But interviews, you know, a lot of people predominantly do uh, interview style episodes. So they need to actually do the interviews. Yeah, there's, there's five different types of episodes we recommend people creating. And one of those types is um, a thought leadership, which is, the thought leadership of that person or the team. And we went into a whole separate episode in detail on the 12, I think it was the 12 different types of thought leadership episodes you could be creating. So those are two you could check out. Um, but we could talk in general about, you know, creating amazing content and there's an art and a science to it. And this is, you know, sometimes people focus on, on just that when we're talking, I'm like, what do I do? What do I say? And there is um, really, uh, research goes into it. Um, asking questions that elicit great stories is, you know, made to stick is one of, one of a great book out there. Um, so that is kind of the center around creating amazing content. If you think about, you know, movies, why are movies so compelling and TV so compelling is because there's a great story. Yeah. And, and contact us if you have questions around this, because we'd be happy to talk it through. Um, all right. And then actual launch. So you want to have a couple of episodes to go live with. Um, again, we're talking about B2B style episodes. We're not talking about, uh, you know, some um, season of a true crime podcast or anything like that. That's a different um, animal entirely. But have at least two to three episodes you go live on uh, that you go live with when you go live. And I want to add a caveat here. Um, at any point in this process, you shouldn't get bogged down. You know, uh, obviously we, you know, help clients all the time to launch podcasts. We built a team that does that. But I say from the bottom of my heart, if you have a B2B business that's profitable, you shouldn't be getting bogged down in the process. I see it happen all the time where people want to start a podcast and they get bogged down. They're spending 15 hours researching how, as you mentioned a second ago, how to do interviews. Or they're spending 15 hours researching how do I get on all the different platforms. You know, that's where your time is much better spent not doing those things and your time is much better spent um, actually the, uh, doing the highest base use of your time, which is having great conversations with great referral partners and strategic partners and, and clients and that sort of thing. Um, but any more other thoughts on the launching of the episode? No, I think um, kind of what you had said, uh, going back to the outreach with the cover art, you know, when you're launching, you also involve people, right? And so especially 
if you have interview based uh, content, um, giving, make it very easy for those people to share it, to like it, to comment on it in their email and social media. So uh, you know, don't do it alone. You know, have your network and the people who are either on or are helping you grow your reach as well. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so you'll want to share it on your social channels when it goes live. So put it across all your different social channels. You want to email people to you know, let them know that it's going live. Of course, if you don't have an email list, you should put one together um, that you can use. Uh, you know, eventually you build a subscriber base uh, across the different platforms, the respective platforms. So that's magnifying your impact. Um, what other thoughts as far as the the actual launch goes, Jeremy? I think you know that's that is just make creating a product that you're proud of, that the person you have had on is proud of. Because then people are more likely to share it, you yeah. know. And then after that, you know, we can talk about after that in a second. But it's it's really a long term relationship, not like okay, it's out, that's done. What's next? Yeah, right. Yeah, and have a system and a process so that you can continue to focus your energy on the highest best use of your time. And here's where I got bogged down for years until you stepped in and helped me to revamp all my systems. But you know, I just didn't have a very good system in place. And, you know, I had, I had other multiple different people that I brought on to help with different pieces, but I was the bottleneck in it. And it prevented me from really having the initiative be successful. And I went from putting out seven episodes one year before you helped me to 52, one per week the very next year. And it probably took me less time because I had a system in place. So that's the other thing is once you launch, you really need to have a system in place or else you will end up putting out seven episodes a year instead of 52 or even more than that. And then the, I think the last piece we want to say is just the value really is in the longevity. You know, it's don't worry too much about the actual launch itself. It's important, but worry about keep on going, keep, you know, you're doing it for the long term because that's where you really reap the benefits. And that's why we say have a system and a process in place so that it doesn't bog you down and you can focus your time having great conversations. Yeah. I mean, you know, as a business owner or whatever job you have in a specific business, we always tell people you should be doing two things, like doing what you need to do for the business, running the business and building relationships, right? And everything else should be off of your plate so you can focus on those pieces. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, if anyone has any questions about this, where can they contact you or I, Jeremy? Yeah, you can go to rise25.com, learn more. If you have questions, there's a contact page um, and email us directly through that. And we really focus on, you know, what's the longevity? So, you know, how do you then turn your podcast so that you have these long-term relationships uh, with your guests and, and other people that are involved in, you know, listening to the show to make it go a lot further? Absolutely. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.